Picking up a keyboard, you have a slew of options other than what size you want to go with 10 keyless, 60% full size. What kind of switches do you want? Tactile, linear, or clicky, or maybe some kind of weird hybrid amongst two of them. Maybe you're a psychopath and you want optical switches that don't give you any feedback. Furthermore, than all that, zooming the lens out even further, you have to make a decision. Do I want a pre-built keyboard? Maybe something like Razer, Corsair, HyperX, somewhere between 60 and $160, all plastic, plug and play, hardly customizable if at all, but ready to get up and running and they sell them in Walmart, Best Buy, brick and mortar stores aplenty. Then you got your customs, maybe you're subscribed to Glarses and you want to build your something component by component, part by part, swapping switches into a hot swappable PCB and putting in foam pads and stabilizers for the space bar and whatnot. But maybe you don't want to spend 300 plus dollars on a keyboard or maybe you don't want to sit there for hours lubing switches when you could be playing games. But yay, there is a third camp and a camp that we are going to explore today, pre-built customs. So a little bit of both. We're talking about the latest model from Kcron, which reminds me a lot of Ikron from Avatar. So if I don't make the comparison now, he hear it here. <laughs> We're going to tangle the tender tendrils of our ponytail with this Kekron. Become one with it, tethered, linked, if you will, underneath the tree of Awa. Okay, last Avatar reference, I swear. The bluff or bottom line up front, this is a custom pre-built keyboard, meaning you can buy it as a kit and source the switches and keycaps yourself, or for an additional $30, there is a ready-to-run pre-assembled version. That is what I'm reviewing here today. And then like a full pre-built, which are barely customizable and generally just thrown together. Although full disclosure, full disparency, when I made the jump to PC game, gaming and built my first gaming PC in 2017. My first keyboard was a Razer Huntsman or Black Widow, one of those with the tactile green switches. But now we've moved on to greener pastures and what I'm grazing on is the custom keyboard world and something like Kcron is a perfect entry because you can get one pre-built where it's ready to run, but down the road if you want to hot swap the switches or change up the look of it with keycaps, you can do that. And moreover than all that, you're getting that premium build quality that you generally only get when you build a custom keyboard. So without further ado, let's sling a leg over our Ikron and review this Kekron. Also, I'm really glad I looked up the English pronunciation of this company or else I'd be calling it the Keishron through the whole video. Kevin's reviewing a Keishron Q60 today. Quick disclaimer for my audience, the Stallions and Stallionettes, this keyboard was sent for review, but this is going to be an honest, comprehensive review. I haven't been paid or told to say anything about it, so if there's any con shortcomings or areas of improvement, you're going to hear about it. So these companies make better products over time. We are right where we need to be, and that's not looking up the proper North American pronunciation of Kikaron, cousin of Dewan and Sharon. Dewan Riley. Now, we're not going to spend hardly any time on the manufacturer's landing page. However, a quick summary of some of the key features of this keyboard. It does have a thousand hertz pulling rate very fast, although that doesn't matter nearly as much as something like a controller or mouse. But hey, fast as shit. Double gasket design. Good. It should be really quiet and thocky, if you will. CNC aluminum body definitely adds to that three plus pounds of weight. Mac or Windows support. Love that. Uh, just ignore this. It's telling you that you can use the VIA software application. We're going to go through it later. It's we're going to go through it later. It's terrible. And of course, you can swap out the PBT keycaps and the included switches, which are going to be a selection of Gateron Jupiter reds, browns, or bananas. The bananas are a dual spring design. That's what I've selected. And here's the guts if you want to see what the insides look like. Make the innards the outards, if you will. As you can see, this bad boy is still sealed in the cellophane, about to bust into the biscuits of this box. Pretty simplistic packaging other than this kind of holographic foil effect and no real marketing slogan or tagline. It just says an open source customizable keyboard for peak productivity, so calling it like it is. And you can see where I scratched the shit out of the box. You are going to be greeted with your quick start guide, but indeed they were able to cram all the steps of getting this bad boy up and running as well as factory resetting it if you've messed up, how to get up and running with the software program, and your warranty information. So I guess that's really all you need, this little placard. A pretty gosh darn thick piece of foam holding everything in place. Your actual user manual, which will be a deep dive into all the components and functions of this keyboard as opposed to the little placard, which pretty much has everything you need. This prompt of a card reminding you to be gentle, of course, always am, always will be. Little foam divider with your accessories, bag after bag after bag, if you will. Oh my 
god, this is so much heavier than I could have ever comprehended. Included accessories wise, you are going to have a small Phillips head screwdriver as well as a keycap puller, which also is a switch puller, a little two in one joint. Then you're going to have your 2.4 gigahertz dongle. Also, that is a little shorty, so it's not going to be some huge stick of gum looking ass thing sticking off the front of your tower. And it does have an adapter as well. Then you are going to have four example keycaps in here. At least I'm assuming these are just going to be examples of the craftsmanship, which does feel incredibly thick, dense plastic, also supple on the fingertips. Oh yeah, look at that, baby. Then you're going to have a little pouch of hardware as well as some no slip rubberized feet for the bottom. A little foam pad, but a little piece of foam here. The included USB-C cable is definitely something to scoff at. It's too short to get the job done, the job being any kind of cable management running underneath your desk in a cable way or anything. But if you just want to plug directly from your keyboard into the front of your tower, not that anybody that has any self-respect of their setup is going to do that. Uh, anyone that purchases this keyboard is probably going to want something longer than this little, what, what is this, five, six footer here? How many meters is that for my Call of Duty brethren? Also, it has one of those stupid plastic Tootsie Rolls, which always get in the way, get entangled up with other wires and don't do anything. No dust covers on the USB A or C end. And this is a C to C. You do have a little adapter if you want to go C to A, but not a huge fan of the included cable. It was a little bit lackluster and surprising considering the keyboard itself. Oh my golly. My first impressions were, why is this thing so god damned heavy? Cast out of one piece of billet aluminum from a 55 Chevy Bel Air. Yeah, this feels like it was taken off the whole of the USNS Shagatsy. Let me explain it in numbers here. Let me get my scale out here, which is used for neither food nor drugs, but rather electronic goodies. Come on, zero out for me, baby. There we go. So the keyboard of a normal human being, just a regular human individual, two pounds, 3.5 ounces. So that's actually pretty hefty as well, especially for a tiny keyboard like this. But then you get this titanium break over here. Probably gonna break my scale. Three pounds, 4.1 ounces. Freakishly heavy. So starting at the base, a few things I really do like is obviously going to be the build quality. This thing is metal and it feels just freakishly durable and insanely rugged. Also, the hardware looks really nice and classy down here. I like these rubberized feet. Not only do they look good, but also they, they're not gonna slip on you. What I don't like is you don't have any so little pop-up feet where you can angle this bad boy, although the base is already at a bit of an angle, but that's just a personal preference. I do like having different steps of adjustment in case I want to cock this thing at an angle, which I don't always do, but sometimes I pop those little feet up. Mm. In the back, you have this little logo, which I'm not a huge fan of. It just doesn't look necessarily high quality and kind of throws off the cosmetics or the looks back here, which is otherwise very clean, classy, subtle, understated. You have your USB-C port right next to a very tiny LED indicator. Right next to that, you are going to have a plastic toggle switch for Windows and Mac support. I do like that both of those platforms are supported. I'm not a huge fan of the switch. It does feel tactile and clicky, but only to the right. When you're clicking it to the left, to the Windows side, it's a little bit sloppy and mushy, but then you get a nice tactile click to the right. That is super weird. It doesn't happen over here with this three-way toggle, which goes from G, which is going to be that 2.4 gigahertz dongle, then cable, which is of course going to be tethered via wire, and then BT, which is going to be Bluetooth. Neither of these buttons feel very satisfying, and the plastics feel incredibly cheap. As for the keycaps on the 60 percenter, they are going to be cherry PBT keycaps, and just cosmetically, I have to say, they absolutely nailed the coloration, the font, everything looks fantastic, and everything feels really good too. This plastic feels incredibly durable, high quality, Quality, thick, not some cheap, hollow, porous, crappy shit that feels like it's gonna fall apart in your hand and everything just feels incredibly buttoned down. And the combination of that double gasket design, everything being a solid chunk of metal and then you have these solid keycaps up top, the switches we'll talk about in just a minute. Build quality wise, this is absolutely a 10 out of 10. I've never really grabbed a keyboard of any size that feels this well put together. Keycaps are also going to be a 10 out of 10 for me as I think these stalkers look fantastic and you can always swap them out as they are hot swappable. The only thing I might dock a half a point for is going to be this included dual, but I'm not that petty, despite the fact they did call me a petty officer when I was in the Navy. Uh, this thing is just a cheap old parts bin special. They probably get a hundred of these for a buffalo nickel, but they do work. This is going to be for removing the keycaps. We'll do that to Z right now. It's a little more difficult with one hand, but there she is. And then if you wanted to remove your switch, you can do that here. That sound didn't come from the board. That was from my oral cavity. The model we're looking at today is going to be the Q 60 Max, not to be confused with the standard Q60, which looks pretty similar. But one of the main notable differences between that Q60 and the Max over here is going to be the switches. Kcron's made the jump to the Gateron Jupiter family, the reds, browns, and Jupiter bananas. Now the bananas are a little bit different than the ones that I chose, kind of a dual spring action. If we come over here to the manufacturer's page for the switches, you can see the red, browns, and the banana, which is a two-stage spring. 
spring. And you have this really useful chart which goes through things like the pre-travel, travel distance, and most importantly, the type of switches. The browns and bananas are tactile is where the reds are going to be linear. Now they've got some very useful diagrams, all the part breakouts. Also, the Max is using a new diffused LED or RGB effect, which we're going to showcase later. These switches are pre-lubed, and I've got to say, they sound and feel very slick like lubed. And then more charts and diagrams that make me want to bust out my beaker and my lab coat and, you know, yeah, hell yeah. Some more, the layout of the printed circuit board. You know you want that, 5-pin. Now, if you do pop for the pre-installed switches, you do have three options. They're all in the Gateron G Pro family. You got the reds, the blues. I do have the bananas. I'm glad I did. These are fantastic. They're probably my second or third favorite switch that I've used to date. And you are going to get a full typing test, audio check, and all that good stuff. There's three main types of switches. You got your linears, your tactiles, and your clickies. These fall into the tactile side of the camp to where they're pretty quiet. You don't have any loud tactile click or pop or anything but you do get a distinct wall of resistance which when it breaks you get a nice snap back or rebound it almost pushes your finger back up giving it resistance saying hey i don't want to be pressed and it feels really nice it's a little bit more resistance than i prefer or i expected they would have i thought they'd be more along the lines of this little cheap ass gamma k keyboard that's my daily driver which uses these switches popping up on screen in front of my noggin here and i really do like those they're a treat to type with to game with and to well i guess that's really all you're doing with a keyboard right productivity or gaming these don't produce any audible sound whatsoever the only sound you're going to really get is going to be the keycaps bottoming out on the bottom of your frame here your chassis but they do have a little bit more resistance i don't know what that equates to in grams or psi but it's got a little bit more resistance than i'd like but what i do like is that all of that resistance is on the front end so as soon as you press down on these keycaps, there is no dead end slop or take up. It just boom, it instantly actuates that switch. And there's not a lot of travel on the bottom end either. There's a little bit more on the bottom. So once I've pressed the switch right now, it's actuated. I can still wiggle the key a little bit. Damn. Yeah, right there. I'm going back and forth on the wall on that sweet spot. And it feels really good. I could do this for, for a long time. It's very satisfying, but a little more resistance than I expected. Now this board's got a big old fat brain. In fact, it's got multiple layer support, but I'm not really a multiple layer guy. I'm pretty surface level and I wanna see these RGB lights. So in order to get this thing up and running, put it into Bluetooth or go dongle mode, not the wired mode, and make sure that you're getting power to the sucker. The quick start guide lets you know that holding down function and A will swap through the different lighting modes. But in the instruction manual, I was pretty curious as to how do you adjust the brightness? And indeed, S and X is gonna be up and down in conjunction by holding down that function button over here. Getting up and running with the software application is freakishly easy. We're going to come to this website. I wasn't going to put the URL in the description, but I don't even think I need to. It's so short. I just Googled Via Key App, and right here you got Via. But you could always use more friends. So I'm going to hit Authorize a Device. You're going to see my Keychron Q60 Max. <laughs> connected. So you do need to do a little bit of legwork to get up and running with a software program or application, which I'm not a huge fan of. It's just extra steps that you don't really want to take when you're trying to get up and running with your keyboard. So you do need to download a JSON file. Here is the link. I'm going to have this URL in the description below for ease of use. But when you click on it, it's actually going to take you to a list of all the Keychron keyboards. So you're going to need to scroll your happy ass down. We got that Q60 joint. Okay, I'm just going to put this right here on my desktop for now. And then back in the VIA website, my device is already authorized. Love that. Now we have our design tab over 
over here and I'm gonna drag in that file. If you ever need to reset your keyboard, there's a little reset button underneath your space bar. Why I need to know that, just trying to get up and running with the software, I don't know. Now this is the keyword over here. Your VIA application should pair up with your Keychron Q60, but if it doesn't, you're not a big dumb dummy. The final step is what did me in here. It's where you got the, the JSON and you're trying to drag it in. It did not, it did not calibrate for me. But if and when you do get up and running with the VIA application, which by the way, isn't designed for this keyboard, VIA is meant to use with generic third-party keyboards that don't have a software program. So a lot of ones you might buy on Alibaba or AliExpress, something like that. So with Keychron, one of the largest custom keyboard manufacturers, I really do think that they should have a dedicated application for Windows and Macintosh. I, I genuinely do. But in the meantime, this is what we have. And when it does work, it actually does give you a lot of control. Now we're over here on GitHub getting some source code for this this board if you will if you thought we were playing it safe today walking down the gaming aisle of walmart picking ourselves up a razor black widow with some tactile greens in it for 80 dollars on sale you're wrong we're in the custom keyboard world now we're looking for source code so we can flash it to the PCB, get us up and running with the software suite. Something that honestly should have been effortless, just plug and play, ready to go. Now, if you've never been on the Keychron website, you are in for a gosh darn treat. Well, only if you like keyboards. If you don't, then you've come to the wrong place and you should probably click off. Not only is Keychron known for their pre-built keyboards like we're reviewing here today, but more so than that, they're also a very reputable vendor of switches and PBT keycaps. So that's really cool. We've got a variety of sizes of keyboards, probably more than you knew existed different series is over here the k pro sounds like a motor you'd swap into a old honda civic hatchback <laughs> i'm saying it because you know the k series is a we're not k swapping civics out here boys we're looking at the k series the q series uh, uh, and yeah, these are all metal. They're the ones that are super heavy. They also have a low profile lineup as well. So pretty much keyboards to fit your needs. Now on the warranty page, it does cite right up front that there is 12 months or one year of coverage, a standardized North American consumer electronics warranty, nothing to be shocked or appalled by. However, I would expect it would be longer than this considering all the competitors, even we'll say Razer and Corsair, so other peripheral makers generally offer a two or three year warranty or higher. So doing the bare bones over here with a year, uh, on a $230 premium keyboard. That's up to you whether or not you want to just do the bare minimum. Well, I was going to tell you about the cons, shortcomings, limitations, or areas of improvement, but I just spilled coffee on my desk. So I'm going to clean that up first, and then I'm going to get to the cons. So we're going to start with the cons. There really isn't that many of them in my eyes, but the first one is going to be that USB-C port was incredibly taut in the back when I was inserting my cable and then removing it. It was quite a fight, quite a struggle. So hopefully that gets broken in uh, over time, but it was very brittle right out of the box. Along those lines, they included USB-C cable is pretty garbage. It's short. It's got that little plastic Tootsie roll on there. Did I mention that it's short? And it really doesn't live up to the prestige of having a Kekron pretty killer looking keyboard. But that's not really a big deal considering you're probably going to bring your own cable to the party, something a little bit longer, color coded to match your theme or setup. And there are a ton of companies that offer third party cables out there. Next up is going to be the RGB lighting. I do like the way it's implemented. I think it looks very good. However, the onboard control of it isn't fantastic. All these other keyboards that have onboard RGB control allow you to swap through the colors of your selected effect. So if you have fading, a solid static color, you can just swap through teal, purple, blue. And I couldn't figure out the key combination to do that with this keyboard, and it's not in the instruction manual. Next up, having some plastic or probably metal because of the build quality and how heavy the sucker is. Some swivelable feet on the bottom where you can prop this thing up at a bit of an angle, cock it up. Would be nice. I always like to have those. Next up, the website can be a little bit confusing to navigate. It's laid out pretty well, but they have so many models and they all kind of bleed or blend together. All the makes and models and SKUs and codes get crossed up. Along those lines, only a one-year warranty is offered. Pretty crazy considering I think Razer has like a two or three-year warranty and they're like bottom of the barrel in the warranty department. Although full disclosure, a lot of these like cheap generic keyboards you're buying on Amazon like Gamma K, they have a one-year warranty. And the biggest con in my opinion, the biggest, fattest, juiciest shortcoming is going to be the software. There is no dedicated software. This keyboard's designed to work with that BIA application, but that's a programmed 
designed to work with all generic third-party keyboards that don't have a dedicated app. So please, Kekron, you're a big enough, juicy enough company. Just build yourself a dedicated app. Hire some software designers, some developers, and, and get it done. Get them writing source code immediately. Trying to use Vio, I use the word trying because in my case, I, I was not successful here. And the reason being, you have to jump through a lot of steps and manually load the, the driver pack for your keyboard and toss it in, and that doesn't even work. But onto the pros, onto a happier road. Let's veer back onto the saying nice things about this keyboard. Cosmetically, it is absolutely gorgeous. I think these stock keycaps look phenomenal. The coloration with that retro styling, mwah, muy caliente, beautiful. They're hot swappable. Same thing with the switches underneath the keycap. So if you want to swap them bad boys out, go for it. But the pre-installed switches have really grown on me. I said during my test earlier that they had a little bit more travel at the bottom than I'd like, and that is true, but they have grown on me and I really do like them. They're probably my top three switches that I've tried as of current. The next pro is absolutely going to be the build quality. This bad boy feels like a brick. When you pick it up, you're going to be shocked, awestruck by not only how heavy it is, but also just how button down everything feels. And last but not least, the final pro is kind of going to slide right into the verdicts department, which is the fact that this is a really good keyboard if you're trying to bridge the gap between building your own custom keyboard part by part or just pre-built keyboard from something like Razer, Corsair, HyperX, etc. Reason being, this is a company that already offers kits as well as sells switches and keycaps individually. I don't think you'd be let down with this keyboard, but I personally will not be making the conversion to it and I'm going to be sticking to my daily driver. Even though it's a much cheaper and less ballerific, I really do like having this media knob where I can adjust the volume and also click it in to mute. And also, this is already uh, getting down to as small of a keyboard as I feel comfortable with because, hello, I do a lot of productivity work such as editing and multimedia stuff. So I like the function keys on there. Yes, I know you can hold down a function button and then use the number keys to become the F keys and stuff. It's not the same. It's not the same. Anybody that does any productivity work on their PC will tell you 60% or 75% is not going to be as smooth of an experience as having a full size keyboard with the media controls over there, maybe some dials and buttons for playback. Yeah, so that's the main reason I'm sticking with this keyboard. Not to mention, I just really like the stock keycaps on this bad boy. My tendrils are already melded to it. Sorry, that was a weird sound. I apologize, but you understand. I've climbed my ass up the tree of AWOS, scraping my elbows on the bark, and this this is what I've connected with. Linked in the description below. Drop in the comment section below what you stallions are using in the keyboard department, and I will see you tomorrow. If you enjoyed the video, liking it helps it to get seen by more gamers, so this information will reach and assist them as well. Much like the back of the TV, I've got plugs for all of my socials down there in the description below. And your wallet will greatly thank you if you check the description because there are exclusive discounts on a ton of products, including controllers, controllers, Control freaks, keyboards, mouse pads, clothes, and energy drinks. And keep in mind that you, the viewer, keep this channel running. The more stallions and stallionettes trotting around the stable, the better. So molly wop that subscribe button like it owes you money, and we'll have the same amount of fun tomorrow.